name is Rachel Peterson and I'm doing my presentation on dynamic metamorphism. So what is dynamic metamorphism? Dynamic metamorphism occurs when a rock undergoes the metamorphic process from extreme pressure. This is a result of sheer stress and pressure. There is no heat involved. It doesn't happen um, when there's heat touching it. The heat has no factor at all no chemical reactions, it just occurs in a small spot along a fault and not in a region. Where does dynamic metamorphism occur? So dynamic metamorphism can occur at any fault line, any plate boundary. It can occur when plates are separating, convergent. It can occur when plates are coming towards each other divergent, even in subduction zones it can happen, and it can also occur when plates are rubbing against each other or transform plate boundaries. What does metamorphism, let me move me down here, what does dynamic metamorphism do to a rock? So, dependent on whether it is near the surface or it's deep below the surface, it can change the rock extremely. So, it can break and bend and stretch minerals and rocks, but sometimes it makes it very powdery and it can also make it large, broken off pieces. It all just depends. So when a rock turns into a powdery form, they're usually called cataclysites, and it's usually done near the Earth's surface. Crushed rocks can also occur, and they're called fault breccias. They're angular and they're also near the powdered rocks. They're going to look really angular and jagged, and that's all from mechanical breaking down of the rocks. This is all mechanical change. If it's deep below the Earth's surface, rocks can become foliated or stretched out looking, and they're usually recrystallized myelinites. So here I have a picture. So when that rock under goes stretching underneath the earth's surface it becomes foliated and I have a few rocks over here that look a little foliated I hope you can see it um, there we go you can kind of not you can kind of see it. it's really evident on this side I hope the shadows not I hope you can see that you can see the lines that what makes it look foliated I also have another one over here that looks quite foliated as well. And basically, it's just the stretching, the result of stretching, and it gives it that kind of line look. Um, and then there's also non-foliated rocks, and they look more sandy and gritty, and usually the size of the crystals are really small, and it kind of has that nice, smooth, sandy feel. I also have some of those as well. So, oh my god. It's, it's backwards over here. Um, there we go. So it, I'm feeling the rock right now, and you can really feel that it feels really sandy and non-foliated. There's no um, stretch or anything, and that's kind of what it looks like. Um, and yeah. Here's another picture. Um, again, you can see right here we have the foliated rock, and you can see because it kind of looks like little tiger stripes on it, and then we have the non-foliated rock, which looks really sandy. The best way I can explain it, kind of, is with uh, kinetic sand. I have kinetic sand right here, and when you stretch it out a little bit, it gets like that foliated look right there. However, if I were to crush it and, you know, put it together, it'll start breaking off and becoming, again, that like really sandy, powdery form that it originally was. If you can see it, I don't know if you can, but I start crushing it, it turns into that powdery form. Meanwhile, when I'm pushing it together, you can see that it's foliating and stretching it out. You can really see it start foliating. You know, my mess. <laughs> and then these are my sources, um, and that's dynamic. 
dynamic metamorphism. Again, when a rock undergoes metamorphic changes and processes due to extreme pressure, either stretching or breaking the rock, and it's all mechanical, there is no heat involved, and there's also under, it's along a fault line, any fault, and it can occur in just a small spot in a fault, and it doesn't occur in a region. And again, that's dynamic metamorphism.